Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can set up a prototype level right away in Goldot using CSGs. With that said, let's jump right in into this video. Now here I am in my Goldot and I actually created a scene and it's just a spatial node that I renamed to level. And in Goldot you can actually create levels in several ways, for example you can use grid maps, you can use mesh instances, in this case we're going to be using CSGs and I would say that CSGs are actually the fastest way that you can actually create prototype levels. So with that said, let's actually select our level and actually add a CSG combiner as a child of it. Then with the CSG combiner selected, we're going to go ahead and do control A and we can actually add a CSG here. In this case, we're going to use a CSG box and we can actually go ahead and resize this box by clicking on the points here and then just dragging as you see here. So that's one way you can actually resize it or you can actually go into the inspector and resize it this way. So you can define a width, a height and a depth from the inspector. So we're going to give it a width of 100, a height of let's say one should be good and then a depth of 100 as well and there we go we have a floor now that we can use for our test level now let's go ahead and actually add another csg to our csg combiner it's going to be another csg box in this case and i'm just going to zoom in here and resize it a bit and that looks fine to me and then I'm just going to repeat the process. In this case, I'm actually going to use a CSG polygon and I'm going to make a ramp out of this by just clicking on one of the points and moving it into position to how I want it. And then in the inspector, I can give it a larger depth to ma basically make it wider. And then I can go ahead and readjust the points uh, if I need to, to make it look the way I want it to be. Now I'm just going to simply move about my CSG boxes here and let's go ahead and actually duplicate the ramp that I just made with the CSG polygon. I'm going to rotate it around the Y axis and move it into place and there we go. We have two ramps with a wall in between. Now it is a little bit hard to see what we're doing since everything's the exact same white material. So let's actually add a material to our CSG. So we're going to select our CSG box and you can actually add a material in two different ways. So you can actually go ahead and go into the inspector and you there's the geometry drop down and there's a material override option here which is empty and you can set a material that way or you can actually go up to the top of the inspector and there's a material option there where you can also click on empty i'm actually going to be using this here so i'm going to click on empty new spatial material click on the material we're going to go into the albedo drop down and then you would see a texture field that's empty right now and i actually already downloaded some assets from kenny assets and it's just uh, some grid texture that I downloaded. So I'm going to be leaving a link to that in the description and then you just want to click and drag the texture into the texture field in your albedo and then you want to open up the UV1 drop down and make sure that triplanar is on to actually properly display the texture. And if we zoom in here you will see that our boxes are now uh, actually the proper size that they should be on as compared to the as compared to what it was before where it was a massive uh, four boxes. So make sure that you actually enable the triplanar uh, option under UV1. Then if we actually want all the other CSTs to have this material as well, we would have to manually go and get the material for everything. We can actually go ahead and copy the material from the uh, floor that we actually just made and then simply go over to material once more and then click paste as you see here. That way we don't have to set up the material over and over. So that's one way you can do things if you want to copy the exact same material to the other CSGs. Or you can also go to material and do paste. And then let's say we actually want a different material or a different color at least. We can actually click make unique now. Go over into the material properties. Once again open up albedo and then change the texture out to a different one. In this case, I'm gonna use a green texture that I also downloaded from Kenny's assets. And there we go, now we have a green texture for our ramp that's also, uh, it's basically using the same settings as the other uh, material we set up, it's just using a different texture because we set it as unique. 
Now let's say that we actually want every CSG to have the exact same material. Well to do that we would want to select our CSG combiner and in the inspector we actually want to go into the geometry drop down and then the material override and then we can do a new spatial material or we can paste the material into it. And in this case I pasted the material that we already had copied into it and as you see that material gets applied to every single CSG box that's a child of the CSG combiner. Now, let me actually go ahead and add my player here. And I actually, uh, this is the same player that I did for my basic 3D movement tutorial. And then I'm gonna add a camera. Uh, here so we can actually see our level. So if you want to see how I made the player, I'm going to leave a link in the uh, video somewhere on the screen. But as, we, as you saw there, if we ran the scene, our player falls through the floor and that's because collisions aren't on for our CSGs. So to turn them on, we want to go into the CSG Combiner Inspector and make sure that the Use Collision option is on. Now if we run the scene once more, you will see that our player doesn't actually fall through the floor and that it actually has collisions on everything that's part of the CSG Combiner combiner, such as the ramps and the wall. And everything seems to be working properly. Now you can still do quite a few things more with CSGs. So let me actually show you what else you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and add another CSG as a child of the CSG combiner. In this case I'm going to be using a CSG cylinder. And then I'm just going to move this uh, somewhere on the uh, floor here. And let me actually move it closer to the camera here so that we can actually see uh, what we're going to do here from the camera. So I'm just going to simply resize the cylinder here. And this looks like a good size. Let me just move it a little bit more. And then in the inspector, there's a CSG shape uh, section. And then under the operation, you can actually change that to something else such as subtraction. And you will notice that it actually makes a hole in our floor. So, if we actually go ahead and test out our scene here, you will see that there is in fact a hole in our floor that our player can actually fall through. So you can actually set up different operations for each given CSG. For example, there's also intersection, but uh, we don't really use this much. So I would say we pretty much just use union and subtraction. So that's those are the two options you're gonna normally use. And for this, uh, let's actually make sure that we set it back to subtraction since we want that hole on the floor. Then you can also add more CSGs uh, combiners to our level. So let me actually go ahead and add another CSG combiner. And you can actually use uh, this to, you can use CSGs to make simple objects. For example, I'm going to make a table. So I renamed the CSG combiner to table and I'm adding a CSG box as a child of it. And I'm just going to move it closer to the camera so we can actually see it. And let me actually set up a material for the table here. So I'm going to go over to, well, let's actually make sure that we actually use collision so that we can actually collide with it. Now we're going to go into the material override under geometry and paste the previous material we had copied, make it unique, go into the parameters, go into albedo, and then use the green texture this time. And that's going to give this green texture to every CSG that's a child of the table. So let me just move this CSG box up, which is going to be uh, basically the countertop. And then let me duplicate the CSG box here a couple times so that we have so that we can use them for the legs, basically. So I'm just going to resize it here, make it a bit thinner. Uh, height wise and then give it a bigger depth and width and I think this should be good now let me actually select the other boxes here for the legs and let me actually delete all the boxes I don't need and just keep one that way I can get uh, one of the boxes to look correctly and then duplicate that box once it's actually correct in the way that I actually want it to look so that looks fine to me so let me just simply actually put it in place now and let me actually press number pad 1 to go to front of our graphical view and then move it into place and then let's click numpad 3 to go to right of our graphic view to also put it into place and let me actually check it out in perspective view. All right, that looks fine. Let me actually do num1 back to go back to front view and place it into place and then go to right view with numpad 3 and that looks fine to me. Then I'm going to select both of the legs and do control D to duplicate them once more and then go into right view and make sure that I place them where I want it. 
And there we go, we have a simple table that we made with our CSGs that actually uh, you can actually collide with. So this is just one of the things you can actually do with CSGs. Uh, you can do more things obviously, but I would say that uh, if you want to create a simple prototype level right away, CSGs are the way to go. Now I would only recommend that you use CSGs only for prototyping purposes. Now let me actually show you another example of what you can do. So let me actually delete everything here except the table and the floor. Select the uh, original CSG box under the CSG combiner and rename that to floor. And then we're going to add a CSG combiner as a child of the CSG combiner here and rename it to doorway. Then as a child of the doorway we're going to add a CSG box, resize it to be a bit bigger and a bit wider here. And we don't actually want to move this uh, on the Z or X axis really. We're just going to keep it uh, in the middle essentially. Um, and make sure that we just pretty much just resize it. And if we want to move it, just remove it on the Y. That way the pivot of the uh, doorway actually stays in the middle of the object. And then I just added a CSG cylinder as another child of the doorway. I'm rotating it on the X axis by 90 degrees. And then I'm just resizing it to make it look bigger. And I'm gonna actually make this intersect with our wall here. And I'm actually gonna move this on the Z so that it's actually intersecting. And I think it is, so it's fine. That, that looks fine to me. Now what I want to do with this CSG uh, cylinder is I want to go to CSG shape and then for the operation I want to set it to subtraction. And now as you can see we have a hole in the wall that basically uh, acts as a doorway. Now I can actually select the doorway and I can do control D. Well let's first actually move it into place. Now I can do control D and now we have a second doorway that we can rotate on the Y axis uh, by 90 degrees and then we can move it and make sure that it's intersecting with the other doorway wall or whatever we're calling it. And then I can simply duplicate it again and then do another duplication of it as well. And as you can see, we can use this to set up levels or rooms right away for our level. I'm actually gonna move the camera right under, well, right behind the player and add it, a, add it as a child of the player so that it actually follows the player a little bit so that we can actually see our room here a little bit better. So I simply did control two to get two viewports so I could actually preview the camera through one of the viewports. And as you can see, if we actually run the game, we can actually go through the doorways that we made using the CSD cylinders. So that's working just fine. And as you saw, you can actually use CSGs to make fast prototype levels and they have quite a bit of functionality. But like I said, I wouldn't recommend using them for anything else besides prototypes. Anyway, I hope that you found this video useful. And as always, if you liked the video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one.